You're watching NBC 25 Today. Still shut down, why a Saginaw Road remains closed and why it may be a safety concern. A rollover leads to a multi-car accident. This morning, how many were injured and how they're doing? And the faith community is coming together to bring a little hope to the city of Flint. I'll explain what that means coming up in just a few minutes. Pretty impressive stuff. Good morning, everyone. I am Leslie Toldo. Welcome to NBC 25 today. And if you're still hanging around from earlier, thanks. Yeah, I'm Mike Wolfo. Glad to have you along. 630 now. Uh, our final half hour with you on this Thursday here on NBC. Uh, and uh, Ahmed Badji, you're in the Weather Center right now. And I think your forecast is looking pretty good. Uh, I would like to think so. The only issue is going to be watching for the fog across the area this morning. That's still trying to build on into Shiawassee and Genesee counties, and it's starting to. Here's what we have right now outside your area. First off, clear skies on storm ready satellite. That's important. But when we go in close, Shiawassee and Genesee counties, dense fog advisory until 10 a.m. The reason is the fog potential. Now, I know Flint says one mile visibility, but that's not downtown. That is focused at the sensor which is at Bishop International Airport. We're starting to get the fog building in, something we have to keep an eye on as the sun gets ready to rise. Now, the cooler temps down there, Owasso and Flint, all the way over to Lapeer as well, that's part of the reason there is so much. It's a good breeding ground to try and build it, but the 60s around the Bay Region, nah, that holds it right back. Now, good conditions all the way through the afternoon. Sunshine gets ready to rise. We get to enjoy a rather nice day, and we warm right on up along with it as the kids come home, looking around 76 to 77, but our high aiming at 78. All right, thanks, Ahmed. Right now, there's a stretch of M57 that remains closed in Saginaw County. It's all due to a gas leak there. Uh, our crews were on scene last night uh, as workers were trying to repair this gas leak. Uh, this is at Lincoln Road in Maple Grove Township. Now, the leak was noticed around 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Maple Grove Township Fire Chief Pat Andres uh, says construction workers ruptured uh, the gas main there. It actually forced them to evacuate three businesses. Uh, no word yet on when M57 will reopen. Crews are still working, we're told, at this hour. Uh, stick with us. We will certainly update the information as new information comes in. Three people hurt after a multi-vehicle accident in Midland. An RV driver didn't slow down yesterday morning during traffic on US 10. It rolled over and six other vehicles were involved in the crash. The RV driver was taken to the hospital. No words right now, no word right now on the others injured. Legislation has passed in Washington to increase funding for lead prevention programs in Flint. Congressman Dan Kildee proposed a bill. It adds $3 million for health experts, educators, and lead prevention activities. Kildee says it's important Flint families get health care and resources they need. He's happy lawmakers are supporting legislation to expand resources for those exposed to lead. And a free community, free, we love free, lots of free in this show. Uh, a free community event is taking place this weekend in Flint, and you don't want to miss it. Uh, it's called Convoy of Hope. Its goal is to serve the residents in the city in a big way, and our Courtney Wheaton is right in the middle of things, uh, getting all the information from organizers. Courtney, what's going on here? Well, Convoy of Hope has been helping this local community for more than a decade. Now I'm here with Tom Mazuzo. He is a pastor at Riverside Tabernacle. So tell me a little bit about your relationship with Convoy of Hope. Well, Convoy of Hope, Courtney, has been around for a long time. Primarily, they do disaster relief around the world. There are hundreds of Convoy of Hope people right now in Houston and in Florida and through the southeast with the tragedies there. And one of the things that Convoy does is one day events around the country, 30 or 40 a year. And we're happy to be hosting one of those here in Flint on Saturday. Thank you so much. And Pastor Robert, tell me a little bit about why it's so important. This is, is in the Civic Park area. Well, because Civic Park has been an underserved area, underserved for some time. And so we're just really excited to be able to bring um, a million dollar worth of resources to this area. Yeah, shoes for kids, groceries, uh, portraits, pictures for families, a lot of health care, a lot of social services. There will be a lot of people here to help this community, the Flint surrounding community. Thank you. And how does it make you feel knowing all these churches are getting together to bring this to Flint? 
there are so many churches across many denominations that have come together to bring this opportunity to the people of Flint. Uh, free services all day long. We work on a guest of honor principle. Everyone who comes on the property is our guest that day. And the whole purpose is to bring hope and a sense of hope to the folks of our community. Thank you so much. And this is on Saturday and it takes place starting at 10. But if you want to get there a little bit early, that's okay. And just give them the location really quick. We'll be at Bassett Park at the corner of Dayton and Ronnell in Flint, Michigan. There you have it. We'll have more coming up in the next half hour. For now, live in Flint, I'm Courtney Wheaton, NBC 25 News. Courtney. State Representative Phil Phelps and Genesee County officials will present a tribute to Bishop International Airport staff on the House floor today. Airport Police Chief Christopher Miller and Lieutenant Jeff Neville will receive that tribute. Neville, you may remember, was stabbed during a terrorist attack on June 21st. Phelps says thanks to the public safety officials at the airport for their service, and he's proud of Miller and Neville. Well, Bay County residents are coming together now to help fight the opioid epidemic. Neighbors Against Drug Abuse, or NADA, is taking a hands-on approach to combat the issue. Drug use has affected each member in some way. Right now, they want to spread the anti-drug message to young people. Christopher Wise is with NADA. He says their goal is to stop addiction before it starts. So we're kind of trying to get to the parents through the students and we're trying to basically cut the addiction source at the road. Kids come out of high school and they have problems with it and it all snowballs and parents are just blindsided. So the entire point of our group in the symposium is to try to educate the family, educate the parents on what to watch out for and how they can make the changes that are necessary. Now, NADA plans to attend homecoming games to speak with parents and students during this football season. They're also hope, uh, hosting an opioid symposium at Bay City Western High School. That's on October 24th. Uh, NADA meets every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, Wednesday night at 7. Uh, those meetings happen at Auburn United Methodist Church. And you can find a link to their Facebook page on our website, NBC25news.com. STARS resumes its nightline bus route today. It runs all school year, Thursday through Saturday nights from 9 to 2. Saginaw Valley State University students can actually show their ID cards and ride for free. Uh, the route starts at SVSU's Student Center and it takes riders to businesses in the Titabawassee Corridor, the Dow Event Center, downtown Saginaw and Old Town areas. Uh, if you're among the first 10 students to hop on the bus, you'll get a $20 value card and you can use that for any STARS service. Business partnerships are coming to Central Michigan University. University President George Ross says CMU is developing a core group of premier business partners that will work directly with students and recruit talent for internships and jobs. Some of the first companies to join are Ford Motor Company and Quicken Loans, but Ross says this is only the beginning. The partnerships will give our students an opportunity um, uh, to engage more with our corporate partners. And uh, the benefit side for them is talent. Uh, every corporate leader I talk to, it's about talent. And we're producing talent here. So we just thought it may be 20 premier partners that we can put them in a position uh, to uh, find the best talent here at CMU and engage them. Ross also announced plans to expand the university's leadership institute to include every student in the university. A Midland Fire Station is getting a facelift. We're talking station number three here, built in the 1970s. It now needs some major renovations, which are possible thanks to a half million dollar grant from the Rollin M. Gerstack Foundation. Now the money will pay for a new roof, dorms, and a kitchen area. And when the work is done, station three will look a lot like fire station number one, which had similar renovations done last year. Hey, if you have a chance to look over at your screen, do it, because this is so cool. This is a walker's view, a new perspective, four stories above the forest floor. This is the progressing Dow Gardens Whiting Forest Canopy Walk in Midland. It's a mouthful, but it's beautiful. Magnum Construction shares this video with us. It will be the longest canopy walk in the country, measuring 1,400 feet. The walk has three different views, a pond, orchard and forest. We're looking at the forest right now. The canopy is slated to open in 2019 and we want to ask you at home. Are you excited about the completion of the Whiting Forest Canopy Walk at Dow Gardens? Head to our website NBC25news.com and let us know. 
And if you are looking for a way to pamper yourself and give back at the same time, head on over to Ana Luis Salon and Day Spa today in Saginaw Township. They're having their 10th annual Unlocking Hope fundraiser. All proceeds go to the Child and Family Services of Saginaw Hope Counseling Fund. There will be a silent auction and a spa package drawing worth over $150. The event is from 10 this morning until 8 tonight. Well, the 28th annual Frankenmuth Oktoberfest starts today, 3 o'clock this afternoon to be exact. It's at Heritage Park. Ten bucks gets you in the gate. They have beer, food, dancing, and a lot more. Uh, tonight, the events all wrap up at 10 o'clock, but you can come back Friday and again on Saturday. The hours are noon to midnight both days. Sunday, they're going to be there from uh, noon to 6. They do have shuttle services available, so head on out there and enjoy, but enjoy uh, responsibly. Good uh Frosty glass of German brew. Oh, sounds very refreshing right about now. Especially with the heat starting to kind of build on up. We've got a little bit of heat on the way as we go into the weekend. 714 sunrise time. We've got the 60s slowly building throughout the morning. Sunshine comes right on back after our morning fog. That lifts on out and then we're done with it. It is an easy day on the water today. Five knots or less for the winds, a foot or less for the wave heights. Pretty much calm no matter where you go out in the water. Light and variable breezes. And so let's try something new. Your kayak and canoe cast for today. 77 to near 78. By the time we get to 3 o'clock, we're clear and sunny. And again, barely a breeze for you to worry about. So you can take even one of those lake trips and not have to worry about, you know, rocking all over the place. But if you head out, unfortunately, well, you've got these a little on the high side for the Skeeter meter all the way through today, tomorrow and into Saturday. We're going to have to keep an eye on how those levels change. But if you wanted to fire up the grill tonight as well, once you get back from your kayak trip, 70s holding all the way through the evening, sunshine as well. Beautiful and the fall colors still holding back. We've got a bit of a heat stretch ahead. I'll let you know how warm we go coming up. You know, in some places I've seen the Skeeters up here look as big as the one down in Mississippi. <laughs> and I've lived in both states, so I know. Uh, make it a change. <laughs> Why a local chain uh, changes its branding and where you're going to find it now. Well, probably no big surprise here that Target is hiring for the holidays. What is surprising? Just how many people they're hiring this year. That's ahead. Stay with us here on NBC 25 today. First, though, here's a look at the top stories on NBC25news.com. Forty-six now on this Thursday morning. Okay, we get these new lists like every month of music that we can play during these bumps. This is the third time I've heard this I'm song. I never get sick of this already. Song. So I'm, I'm officially banning it for at least two weeks. You are well, outvoted. I saw these guys with Maroon Five train. <laughs> you have been vetoed. I saw them at DTE with tra with a Maroon Five. They were fantastic. Ooh. They were really good. It's a nice shot okay. there, Bay City. You can see the sun is starting to rise yep. there. On the just, horizon. just starting to get a little bright there. Yep, absolutely. Uh, let's take a look at some consumer headlines now. Target uh, expects a busy holiday season, I think, as does every retailer. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, they are hiring right now uh, additional temporary workers to help get them through the season. Yeah, Target plans to hire 100,000 holiday workers this year. The retailer is hoping to compete with Walmart and Amazon for your holiday cash. Last year, Target only hired 70,000 holiday workers, and Target isn't just hiring in its stores. They're also hiring 4,500 people to help in their warehouses in order to fulfill online orders. They must have done just fine last year to add this many people. Well, I'm, I'm going to... I'm thinking maybe they feel like last year they didn't hire enough. Oh, there you go. I mean, th an additional 30,000 people, that's a lot. That is a lot. I was in Target multi multiple times during the holiday doing research. And, um, <laughs> just doing research. research. Just doing retail research. Research on how to spend Ricky T's money. That's yeah, what that's the lines all about. were long. <laughs> Could have taken up for him. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, and folks, did you happen to move this summer? 
Uh, if so, you were not alone because this summer was a big one for moving, according to the folks at United Van Lines. Yeah, the most popular areas to move into this summer, Seattle, Dallas, and Portland. I've been to Seattle and Dallas, never been to Portland. Uh, hmm. Seattle and Dallas are great. What about the ones that people left here? What are the top ones people left, Amin? Chicago and New York. Now, no Michigan City was in the top ten of either list, which I'll take that as positive. Yeah, I will, too. Uh, yes. Chicago, I've been to Chicago, and it's it's nice, but it's very congested. New York is way too congested for me. <laughs> Concrete jump. Uh, okay, we talked Target at the top. We'll talk Kmart at the bottom here. Uh, they're making a change to the women's clothing, changing uh, their reference to plus size to something called fabulously sized. I love this. The fabulously sized section includes extended sizes from Kmart labels, including... JS, Jacqueline Smith, of course, and Basic Edition. In addition to other Kmart brands, Intimates and Attention Plus now come in a wider range of sizes, up to 4X and 5X. Many of the items will also be mixed into the main women's section. Cool. The, I, I fabulously sized. I think that's fabulous. There you go. All right, here's what we got going on in your fabulous. summary forecast. <laughs> the weather is fabulous, continuing with the word fabulous. As we jump on into the day, the only thing that we have to worry about this morning is until about 10 a.m. Dense fog advisory for Shiawassee and Genesee County could be a little rough there. Visibilities are going to start to get a little low here over the next hour or so. Mainly rural areas, not so much in the town, but it is something to watch for. The other thing is this, still a big story, honestly, is out west. We just talked about Seattle and Portland. They're kind of bracketed by some pretty nasty wildfires actually out that way right now, all the way into Montana and Idaho. All the smoke, these are so strong, just to give you an idea. All this gray you see, that's the smoke from them all the way. You know those places? We actually have, that's part of the reason why our blue sky hasn't been so blue. It's been kind of a milky white. It's all smoke high up in the air left over from the complete other side of the country. So. It's been a bit rough for them out there. We'll keep tracking that as well. Now, sun returns for the day ahead for us. We don't have a lot of moisture to work with anymore, but uh, while we dry it out, grab a car wash, you actually get a couple days to enjoy it now. Not until Sunday night do we get the rain back. Highs across the southern counties, looking at about 78. Look at all that sunshine. Yes, I'm going to enjoy the nice dry stretch that we've got here. We have rain on the way, and I know some places want it, but don't worry, it is coming. We've got 75 to 76 in the thumb. Beautiful sunshine there as well. A high of about 78 in the Tri-Cities and then the northern counties. If you are in Clare, Gladwin, Aranac, Ogemaw, or Iosco counties, you have a shot. Look how close you get. You very well may hit that 80 mark. Nobody else will, but you have that shot. Plenty of sunshine and you're the only ones that get that pure, pure sun with no cloud cover to filter through. That's important because on here on Storm Ready Futurecast, you can see it all break apart. We do have high level clouds that'll break as well, but it is still going to be a nice bright day. By the time we get on into tomorrow, staying sunny, looking uh, pretty good, but here's the deal. By the weekend, heat remains, 80s. Wow, that looks pretty good. Uh, Sunday morning, bright and sunny. Rain returns in the evening on Sunday, and that'll hold through Monday and Tuesday. And honestly, I don't like going further than seven days. It, 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 I don't like doing it. Any meteorologist that tells you that they can 100% accurately go further than seven days is downright lying to you. But a lot of the stuff... <laughs> further than two days, they're actually lying to you. But <laughs> uh, Anything beyond that right now, everything does look relatively mild. I'm love really it. hoping it's good. Love it. Yeah. I love it, too. All right, it's uh, 6.51 now. We're about nine minutes away from the Today Show, live from New York. Here's what's coming up right now, folks. There is a criminal investigation into a nursing home horror. Uh, this is happening in Florida. Eight senior citizens dead, hundreds more evacuated from a stifling hot facility that lost power after Hurricane Irma. This story is mm, not good. Heartbreaking. Also, why social security numbers may soon become a thing of the past as outrage grows over the massive Equifax data breach. Mm. Guess who was included in that? Plus, Chip and Joanna Gaines from the hit show Fixer Upper stop by Studio 1A to make a major announcement. That's all coming up next on the Today Show. Top of the hour. Stick around for that. Here's a quick look at Flint this morning. Uh, as you see, the sun continues to rise over downtown. A little hazy there, fog trying to build, but it's having a difficult time. Best view of the city. There it is. Yeah. We've got your top stories next.
It is uh, 656. Now, here are your top stories. Right now, a stretch of M57 remains closed in Saginaw County due to a gas leak. Uh, NBC 25 on scene last night as crews work to repair this leak. This is at Lincoln Road in Maple Grove Township. Now, the leak was noticed around 2 yesterday afternoon. Maple Grove Township Fire Chief Pat Andres says construction workers ruptured the gas main there. It forced them to evacuate three businesses. No word yet on when M57 will reopen. Stay with us for updates. We'll certainly let you know when we find out. And we, we have an update this morning on two separate shootings that happened in Saginaw. One at Linwood and Gallagher. Michigan State Police tell us a bullet grazed a 17-year-old boy's head. Officers found more than 20 shell casings at, the, at that scene. And just a half a mile away at the Birch Park Apartments, a 70-year-old man was shot in the forearm. Both shootings happened just after 9 Tuesday night. Right now, MSP doesn't have a suspect information, and they haven't determined if the two shootings are related. Well, be sure to stay with NBC 25 for continuing coverage on air, online, and through our trusty mobile app by which you can get updates right there at your fingertips anytime you want them. It's powered by NBC25news.com. And uh, coming up next, we're going to switch over to uh, Fox 66 mornings very quickly. Coming up, keeping students safe. State lawmakers look at possibly raising penalties if you pass a school bus with the flashing red lights. How much you could pay. And in Healthy You, you learn something you don't want to know. The filth on your cell phone. Plus, and I'm at Science Club. It's all about lasers. We get to learn a bunch of stuff. And there you go. Make yeah. the switch with us. We're making it right now. We'll see you in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Come on over. We'll see you over there.